الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد respected brothers friends Allah has created insan in the best forms possible out of all of the creations of Allah Allah has selected human beings me and you to do such amazing work on the face of the earth that no human can ever do when Allah created insan, the angels were the ones who raised the question and said, Oh Allah, are you going to make on the face of the earth those who will go around shedding blood and causing trouble? And this is what we do. If you look at humans, me, you, our generation, those who came before us, we can see that humans have the potential to cause the most horrific crimes on the face of the earth. With a single press of a button, they can destroy two million people in one go. With a single indication, they can cause the slaughter of entire nations. They have the ability to be able to destroy cities. But at the same time, the same human being has the ability to be able to create societies. It has the ability to be able to create people like me and you. It has the ability to be able to create sciences, knowledge. When Adam salam came to the face of the earth, human beings began to develop their own sciences. Writing was something that was unheard of on the face of the earth. They began to establish languages. They began to create instruments, tools, weapons from stone. And then they developed stone weaponry into iron weaponry. And then they developed that. And today we have such technology, which is... You know, mind-boggling technology. If you were to go back in the past 100 years, 200 years, and you could say, I can speak to a person from England, to Australia, and I can see them face to face and I can speak with them, they'd call you a magician. They might even put you at the stake and burn you alive. But today, this has become a reality. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said to the angels, I know that which you do not know. This is part of what he was mentioning. The Mufassirin, when they mention this, Tahir ibn Ashur, famous Mufassir, he says, Allama Adam al Asma'a kullaha, he says, the teaching of the names means that Allah gave man the ability to think. Thinking was something which was given to human beings before they were even put onto the face of the earth. Why? Because thinking is what makes the difference between us and between all of the rest of the creation. When the Anbiya alayhi salam, they used to come to the earth, what did they used to call towards? They used to call towards a concept which required you to think, which required you to question your society, which required you to question what was happening in, in, amongst your people. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, what was their concept? What was their aqidah? What was their belief? They had beliefs that were so twisted that to them, the norm was to bury your daughter alive. That was the norm. The norm was to abuse someone whose color was darker than yours. The norm was to kill someone because his camel ate in front of your camel. The norm was to sell your women to one another if one of their husbands passed away. This was the norm. And so when the Prophet ﷺ, he spoke the first words, the effect of that was so powerful in their society that immediately Abu Lahab, Abu Jahl and a whole list of others they stood up against the Prophet ﷺ. Not because, not because of who he was but because what he was calling towards. And this same belief, this same aqidah is very important in the creation and the destruction of societies. Today our societies are being created by beliefs. The Western society we know is a Greco-Roman Roman belief. It's a philosophy. The ideas of secularism, the ideas of capitalism is all rooted in ideologies that were, that came about hundreds and maybe thousands of years ago. So this is what it's causing in the societies today. And when the Prophet wasallam he came, his call was towards the one Allah. And a call towards one Allah, what did it mean? It meant you must observe the laws of Allah in your life. 
whether you like it, whether you don't like it. Asa an takrahu shayin wa huwa khairun lakum. Maybe you don't like something, but you know, it's good for you. Maybe you love doing something, but at the end of the day, maybe it's something bad for you. It might not be bad for you today. It might not be bad for you tomorrow, but someday in the future, it will be bad for you. Us Muslims today, my brothers, are in a situation today where we have on one side the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly in front of us. And on the other side, we have other things calling us towards bad. When Allah created insan, He had given him these two options all the time. Every morning you wake up, you will always have these two options. Every evening you go to sleep, you will always have these two options. These are the two paths that Allah has created for us. And today we have to make a choice. How are we going to live our lives? Do we want to live our lives in short-sightedness? Where we only do things because of the quick benefits that we get. I am only going to work for my community because my community needs me at the moment. I am not going to work for my community because the benefits will only be reaped by people who come after me. Is this kind of mentality the mentality me and you want? Is this what the Prophet Wasallam left behind when he broke that stone in, 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 in Khandaq? What did he say? Allahu Akbar. When he broke it again, what did he say? Allahu Akbar. When he broke it a third time, what did he say? Allahu Akbar. Why did he say this? The Sahabas asked. He said, when I broke it the first time, Allah opened for me a vision and I saw the castles, the palaces of Yemen being conquered by the Muslims. When he struck it again, he said, Allah showed me that Persia will fall to the Muslims. When he struck it again, he said that the Roman palaces will fall to the Muslims. Now you're talking to Sahaba in, the, in, in their thousands, maybe not even reaching 10,000. You're talking to Sahaba who barely had weapons to fight the enemy and who had to plan a trench around Medina to protect their own houses. And he was telling them something that was going to happen after he passed away. What kind of a visionary man was that? What kind of a person was that that creates men? So this is why I'm saying, my brothers, dear brothers, that today we have to think for ourselves, what visions have we created for ourselves in the future? How are we going to work for this community? You know, this is a masjid you have, an amazing masjid, second time I've been here. But I know that many, many years ago I came to Wolverhampton, there was hardly any masjids in, in Wolverhampton. The, the masjids that you would have were masjids that were made, you know, were, that, were, that were houses, that were used as mosques. But today you have such a big community, community of, Mus of Muslims from, from Arab, Arab countries, from Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Africa, from all different types of people. Yet we all have to work together for the benefit of this community. We all have to see how can I be a, an asset for this community. You know, this masjid, the uncle, you know, who invites me here. You know, I always thank him for this. And, and me, myself, you know, I, I love doing talks over here because, you know, masjid is packed out as well. But also, you know, it's something that you guys can work towards. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives you, you and me the ability to be able to apply this in our lives. And also, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help all the Muslims around the world. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wal muslimin Allahumma ayyid al-Islam wa al-Muslimin Allahumma ansur ikhwanana fi kulli makan Allahumma ansur al-mustada'afina min al-rijal